Hey guys, how are you going? Today I'll be showing you how to create a custom radio group using pure HTML and CSS. So we're going to be creating a design that looks something like this. So I'm sure many of you have seen a design like this on the web before. Um, it's quite easy to use. You simply choose an option and that right there is going to be your now selected option. So it's very easy to do using pure HTML and CSS. There's no need for any JavaScript in order for this to work. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch. So inside the text editor, we're going to firstly go inside the body and make a new div with a class of radio. And this div right here is going to be the main container for each one of our options. So now we're going to be taking advantage of the actual HTML input with a type of radio. So for our first option, let's say input with a type of radio uh, with a name of something like my radio and an ID of my radio number one. So obviously uh, for each one of your options, the name should stay the same, but the ID should change per option. We're also going to give this a value of, for example, we can just say option number one and also a class and this class is going to be radio underscore underscore input. Okay. And the type needs to remain. So that right there is our is our whole input for the first uh, option. Okay, and we're also going to be just so you know, we're going to be hiding this by default um, with CSS later on. But anyway, uh, let's move on to just putting our label. Uh, and this four is going to be for my radio number one. So of course, uh, this four attribute here needs to match up with the ID that you specified right there. Um, in the label, we're going to say, for example, option number one. So now um, we also, sorry, we also need to add a class here. And this class is going to be radio underscore underscore label. So now that is all the HTML that is required for a single option. So saving this and then refreshing gives us something like this. So as we can see, uh, if I was to press on the label, we can see that uh, by pressing on the label, the uh, the the actual radio button gets selected. So we are going to be hiding the actual radio input. So uh, let's just go back inside here and we're just going to be uh, duplicating uh, these two or that one uh, twice more uh, to make three options. So we're going to say my radio and do my radio number two and then option two for the value also. And the same thing down here. So option number three my radio number three and of course option three. So now saving this and refreshing gives us something like this. So now let's move on to the CSS in order to make it look something like this. So um, inside the style tags, let's firstly just add a bit of a margin on the actual body for some space around the corners. Let's just say 20 pixels. Okay. Let's also go down here and firstly target the radio container class and we're going to give this a display of inline flex. The reason for the flex is so that we can easily uh, position each one of our options um, in a row. Okay. We're also going to say overflow and make this hidden and a border radius of 15 px. So the reason for this overflow of hidden is so that the border radius is always going to be displayed. If you don't use this right here, then your radius may not be displayed depending on how um, your elements inside here are styled. But anyway, let's also say box shadow. We're going to make this 0, 0, 5 pixels and then RGBA. Uh, 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.25 for a 25% opaque box shadow. So now saving this and refreshing gives us something like this. As we can see, uh, the main container is basically complete, or it is complete. Uh, we can move on to the actual radio labels themselves, or each one of these options. Okay, so back inside here, let's firstly just hide the default input. So we can say radio underscore underscore input, give this a display of none, and that is all for the input. So now, of course, uh, this will now give us no actual HTML input fields. Um, so now it's just going to be about styling up each one of these options so that they look like this. So back inside here, let's target the radio label um, class. We're going to give this firstly some padding 
of 8px top and bottom and 14 for left and right, a font size of 14px, and a font family of sans serif. Of course, if you're using a custom font, you can change this to be your own font. Let's give it a text color of uh, white and a background of hash 009578. That is the color of decode or the decode green color. Um, also down here, we're going to say cursor and make this pointer. That way, we're going to get a cursor, sorry, a, um, a pointer cursor when hovering over it. Um, and also down here, a transition for the background at 0.1 seconds because if you noticed back inside the example, um, when I press on this, we can see there's a slight transition for the background color when it gets selected. So anyway, uh, saving that and refreshing here gives us something like this. So we're almost done. Um, so now it's going to be about just putting a border between each one of these options. So back inside here, let's do a selector that looks something like this. We're going to say radio underscore underscore label. Okay. Then we're going to say colon not, and then we're going to say last of type. So this right here is going to select every single label that is not the last of its type. So um, basically, we're selecting uh, this one here and this one here. Okay. So for this, we're going to say border dash right, and we're going to say one uh, px solid, and then I'm going to be using a darker shade of my decode green color. That's going to be zero zero six and then B56. So of course a darker shade um, of this one right here. Saving this and refreshing gives us something like this. So not bad. Um, so now we can move on to the final part of this video and that is going to be uh, making it so when you press on this, it is going to um, change the background color. So back inside here, let's go down here. I'm going to say dot radio input. Okay, so targeting the actual input class, then we're going to say colon check. So basically we're saying when the radio input, this guy right here, when this uh, gets checked or selected, then we're going to say plus, then we're going to say dot radio underscore underscore label. So this right here is the adjacent sibling combinator. And basically it just means that we're going to be selecting the next sibling with this class right here radio label in the context of an input like this, the next sibling with that class is going to be the next one right down here, which is the label. So we're going to be selecting this label right there when this one gets selected. And for this, we're going to simply say background. I'm going to make this hash 006 and then B56, the exact same color, which I used for the border just up here. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. I can now choose an option and it works perfectly fine. So I do want to say that the reason why this works and the reason why the radio input gets a uh, checked state is because these right here are labels. And since this label belongs to this input, it actually gets selected behind the scenes. I can prove this by going up here and removing this display none on the actual input, save this and refresh. And we can see now each one of these inputs have not been selected. If I was to press on the label, we can see it gets selected right there. So that's how it works. Um, very easy to do using pure HTML and CSS. Um, and there we go. That's how to create a custom radio group. Um, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.